Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Stan, well back as we pull the pin on episode 20 of House of Rugby, brought to you by Joe, together with our good friends at Guinness. My name is Alex Payne. It is a pleasure to welcome back the Lord, who looks exceptionally smart this week. Thank you. I thought after... Class decorum. Yeah, after last week, I just thought we needed to pull things back yeah. on track. Highs and lows. Do you get a prescription with that <laughs> coat or, or blazer? Yeah, I, t- I get an immediate geography degree. <laughs> You, you do. do. How is your colouring in? Yeah, very... Well, you're like a shading on Oxbow Lake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the Hoffs alongside as well. You Hello. Need, you need a hug this week. Mm. I've got some game time, so I can't, be, I can't be too miserable. I want to start with the big breaking news, the comeback the nation wanted to see. Yeah. Everybody dialing in to see how it went. Did you watch Partridge last night? I, I, do you know what? I didn't, and it really... You haven't... You didn't watch I, it? I saw the advert for it where he's like, get me some water, get yeah. some water... Chloe, <laughs> Chloe, I was in the car on the way to training. We had, I called her, had a chat about my day, even the day hadn't started. We were like organising because she wants to know everything. I, and, uh, and I like talking to her on the way. Um, and, nice. and then she, I put the phone down. She called me back straight away and went, you do know we miss, missed Alan Partridge. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know. I play it. When you get home, it'll put a smile on your face. I what, I might, I it's exceptional. It. Yeah, actually, I might do that. That's key. I tell you what we've also found out. What? One of my other heroes. Little fan of the show? Yeah, Nick yeah. Frost. Nick Frost, if you're listening, I absolutely bloody love you. <laughs> and your mate Simon Pegg. You're a legend. We could find but a fourth Ugo chair. has not been on the show. No, <laughs> no. Yes. So you all, you were, He giveth, he taketh away. Here he giveth we, and yeah. he taketh away. He's just pulled it. He just lost a little bit. Let's find another chair and a fourth pint of Guinness. And welcome Nick Frost to the show. Oh, we, we would Next love to have around. Nick Frost. And also yeah. Ricky Gervais. I'm not sure he has seen the show. Well, someone show it to him. Someone run up in the street because he'll love that and show it to him. <coughs> Watch House of Rugby. Especially when he's in Hampstead. They love that when you're in Hampstead. You are Gervais just with a little bit more timber, aren't you? No, he has a lot more talent and a lot more cash, um, which separates us, unfortunately. Um, I'm told we are still the UK's number one sports, I was going to say podcast, podcast forward slash show, forward slash YouTube are you, what are you doing? I'm just working. <laughs> I don't know. I'm working on my politician. And you're 50. still scribbling. I'm still working on my politician. Okay. He's, uh, he's literally on a presentation for the kids later, <clears throat> yeah, aren't yeah. he? For, uh, yeah. keep, keep got going. a big keynote speech. L- yeah. Let's get it done before we get to that second Side Z dam scheme he's got to talk to about people in, in, in geography and other things. Very nice. You like that? Lateral moraine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Erasion, corrosion, erosion. Yeah. All that oh, stuff. Yeah. Yes. All that fascinating um, stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's let's try and keep our listeners, yeah? Yes. Sorry, let's do that. Give them away. How was it being back? Yeah, good. Actually, really nice. You know, it was the first... Scampering th- around the sunshine? Yes, it All was. Freddie Burns? Yes, um, but I also got done by Zach Mercer, so... Yeah. Um, give us the way. Do you want me to address... So, Hugh Miller, thank you for your tweet about... Haskell's two bad bits yeah, of the game. Fuck you, Hugh. <laughs> you make a cup of tea and you spill it on your cup. The rest print. of it. He, <laughs> did, he, sent, he sent me <laughs> a taking short. Well. Yeah, sorry. Taking read a few sorry, feedback. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 He makes a cup of tea. Well, has a really nice time with the chocolate well, we biscuit. He spills and on I was going to defend Burns his penis you. off. Burns is he he yeah. sent me uh, <clears> the uh, short highlights of the match and then highlighted two bits. As if he's done that. Get a life or a girlfriend, <laughs> you absolute virgin. What are you doing? Or Nobody boyfriend. cares that or much. Or a boyfriend in this in, uh, or, or, yeah, or a boyfriend. Or a boyfriend, yeah. We're, we're all inclusive. I assume that was the thing. Get a partner. <laughs> or okay. don't get anything. Just be satisfied with not being anything. Be happy. happy. Sat at home and watching yeah. highlight reels and then picking people apart yeah. on social media. What an absolute plum. Um, but yeah, he did highlight where you... Uh, Zach Mercer went on the outside. But I blame the winger on that, not you. Uh, obviously being... Uh, a defensive guru that I was. Yeah. He, you stayed straight on a decoy runner and had to watch the guy around the back. And your winger just went, "Hey, see you later. I'm going off." On, when there was another guy outside him, so. And I was on the travelator yeah. because, funny enough, Hugh, I haven't <laughs> played rugby in four months, and you wouldn't last thirty seconds. Your penis. So, um, <laughs> I, we should do comments. We, I'd be saying this. Do you know we should? We it's should. Like that, the, the, where they read offensive tweets at yes. celebrities yeah. and they yes. get a chance to respond. Yes, to it. and obviously, I would just love to, to, to hear that. Because yeah. we had some, quite a lot of positive feedback, and we do, we were going to do comment of the week. That wouldn't be you because you're a loser. Um, but, but I love one know. on the YouTube feedback form this week that said Alex doesn't need to be there. He offers nothing. I was like, absolutely bang <laughs> yeah. on. I just get front row seats. That's not true. I genuinely believe that if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be oh, successful as can we, rubbish. Can we hug? Go on. After the, okay. Thanks, mate. Oh, I've just dropped my phone. <laughs> Those are broad shoulders you've got there, James. Thank you. 
Um, oh, we're well, nice. This is this well. is going extremely well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> extremely loving. Just before we talk about the what we can do on the show or not do on the show, as we do every week, a reaction to last week and young Joseph Marler. <coughs> wow. I'm not entirely sure I've recovered. Actually, it, it took me. That. Obviously, I was enjoying myself in Greece, so it took me a little while to listen to it when I was actually heading home. But. Uh, yeah, I sort of... Amazing. I was trying to do something whilst listening to it, and I I couldn't do that. <laughs> I had to actually stop what I was Lie doing. in a dark room. And fully concentrate on what was going on. But yeah, it was, it was spectacular. Well, the weird yeah. thing the was, that we was were two trying hours, to make... <laughs> and you know, we had to, someone had to edit it down. Well done to the editing team. The weird thing yeah, is, we were trying to do a show, and we couldn't concentrate on that while yeah. he was talking in the background. So. You know you're in trouble when you, you welcome a guest on to a talk show, and you say question number one he goes i'm giving you nothing i'm like okay <laughs> we, 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 we got we, we got a long show ahead and we, we did two hours for a one hour i mean yeah. there have yeah. actually well, and the amount of times you asked a question you go well, what do you mean yeah i love to what, what, what do you mean there have been a lot of people who've said could we release the uncut version <laughs> a director's cut no and in the words of producer Sai. There is zero chance <laughs> of the rest of that footage going to air for some very good reasons, namely that we'd all like to continue I need in the broadcast the, I need game. A private viewing of that. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. it was just a few occasional. Obviously, there's some swearing. I'm guilty of it. Um, I intended not to swear when I first started this show, but we haven't been fuck managed that. to do that. And there was fuck that. And there was Mr. a few, Miller. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah. But there was a few words that were just probably a bit too niche for. Um, for this program, so we, we couldn't we couldn't do it. But what I liked about it is I love Joe. I thought he was he was um, great. He was I thought actually, I like his combination of like exactly what you said: stop, go, stop, go, yeah. give a little take back, yeah. like really personable, and then absolutely shut the door. And then I'm going to tell you something really funny. Um, but I thought his real insight about the retirement I I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, and I think we should definitely have him back. I think <laughs> if we can, but like we need a little bit of time. Yeah, to, to recover. Yeah, to build up the energy. Um, love you, Joe Marler. Um, on this week's show, we're going to, it's in that very sort of English way, we're going to do, we never talk about rugby when it's going well, and when it goes badly, we're going to do a bit of self-flagellation. Mm. We'll look back at the Wales uh, defeat of England in Cardiff, we'll discuss Plan Bs, we'll find out what happens when you lose your head, and we are stepping out of the ritz and glitz of Hollywood this week, and into the dirty, seedy world of politics. We've picked Politicians 15 in the perfect pool. Which is a bit of a loss, and it's changed because we were going to do yeah, we were going to do di dictators yeah. of the world, but you found it out, and also I, you picked the one subject that you know more about than, <laughs> than me and than anyone than else. Me and Tins. I'm not sure that a dictators 15 is going to enamour us to anybody. Sorry, I, I should be very clear that when I do my my political uh, 15, it's not based on my own views or anything else. So please don't <laughs> nause me. I don't get, I don't care about Brexit. I don't care about your views. I don't care. I've just chosen. He says in his Tory blue T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, cut me, and I will definitely bleed blue. Um, I, I yeah, just want to make that clear because I think you've underestimated how offended people get about politics okay. in this heightened atmosphere yeah, at the moment. It. I much rather yeah, we'll go with um, well, at least with dictators. That everyone knows it came that off the back of yeah. Paul Potts, who you yeah. thought was from Cornwall. Last no, week. I didn't say no. That was Simon. Paul Potts. No, it, Paul Potts was. on X Factor. Yeah. Um, but I was Cambodia. Like, yeah, Cam Cambodia. I said Cambodia. That's what yeah. I did. You did say Cambodia. I did say Cambodia. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just, I just, I just think. We no, I also think we should. Very... Do, I want to a serial no. killer fifteen. It's, it's Harold a, Shipman it's, at ten pulling the strings. The thing is, no, don't do that. It's fine. It's a factual thing. So. It's happened. You can't go, oh my God, we shouldn't talk about it. It's yeah. history. Yeah. I'm just not sure. You're saying you shouldn't talk about history. No, I'm, I'm, let's you, discuss history. You're, saying, you're basically saying just, we shouldn't make fun of I'm just not saying that the atrocities that have been in the past. 15 is funny on any level. Yeah, but... It, <laughs> 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 it was exactly. It's not. If you can't laugh at it, what are you going to do? Yeah, the world exactly. is full of people who can't laugh at Fuck anything anymore. The world's anymore. too serious as it is. Yeah, at least okay. have a laugh at the... I, I want to just be very clear that everything I say on the show is pretty much 99% of the time a joke unless I look serious. <laughs> um, and if people get offended, everyone gets offended by everything yeah, now. Yeah, Honestly, ridiculous. I know that they say, you know, the snowflake generation is good to be sensitive and there's some things you can have. And I'm more likely than, than most to end up on one of those things where I have to come out and like the press conference looking really sad <laughs> going, yeah. I'm really sorry. Your earnings are going to go <laughs> millions to zero. I'm really sorry. I, I really didn't mean to say what I said. Like, I'm pretty much going to try to avoid doing that. I'll never apologise. I think a dictator's 15 would be awesome. So you, you don't go into detail of like, you know, specific things. And laugh at what they did. I think you just got to say, oh, you know, Stalin at, you know, <laughs> Stalin at 10, Hitler at Crash Ball 12. You know what I'm saying? 
Something like that. Yeah. No? Can we just send our love to producer Sai this week? He's not here this yeah. week. He's having quite a tough week. So we've got producer Rich in there who's now saying, please move on here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Rich. to the game. Hey. It ain't easy. Rich, you're going to say beast. that a few times tonight. <laughs> um, love and hugs to producer Sai. Should we talk <laughs> Cardiff? Go on. You yeah. Say something? I say, love you, Sai. Love you, Sai. Um, well, I mean, well done, Wales, first and foremost. Mm. Congratulations to the victors. God, it was disappointing to watch there, wasn't it? Worst game of rugby I've ever seen. <laughs> right, okay, let's not make not muck about. It's a bit of an exaggeration. No, the worst game of rugby I've ever seen was the one that Joe Marler talked about, that Indian uh, rugby game video, <laughs> where they made that Indian actors playing rugby, where they're like exploding <laughs> karate, chopping each other. <laughs> that that is, is the worst game of rugby I've ever seen. Okay, okay, it was movie. a pretty dull game, let's put it that way. Um, they, England kicked the ball away too much. Wales's attack was pretty useless. Um it was it rope dope? Did England did Wales well, know what look, they were doing, I, I, or did so England just run out of ideas time, and Wales profited? In the first half, I was as I said, I was supposed to watch it again today to actually give a far more thorough. Uh, but it, it felt to me, in the, in, yeah, <laughs> felt to me in the first half that England came out and played the game that they played for the last couple of weeks in terms of their defence was outstanding again, and then they just kept dinking balls in behind and putting the back uh, Wales back in their own twenty-two, and then they had to box out, and England had the ball and, and played a little a little bit more on the front foot. Obviously, Tom Curry scored that try, which was just an opportunist sort of space, went for it. They felt then in the second half, obviously, we started giving away a lot of penalties, back-to-back penalties. But being sat in the stand, definitely felt a swing sh- uh, swing change in the crowd when Sinclair went off in yeah. terms of they felt that, oh, hang on, there's something happening here. Yeah. So I think, I think it had gone to 10-6 from that. Um, and you could feel a, a different rise in the in the belief um, and then we kept giving away penalties. Yeah, I was just disappointed. I was disappointed. I think uh, you talk about plan B. I think Wales definitely did something different in the second half in terms of the way they held their backfield. I remember a couple of clips that looked like they were sitting two people in the 15-metre channel to take away those grubbers that yeah. uh, Farrell had put in in the first half, uh, which then gave us nowhere to go. I think we had three blocked kicks in the second half, yeah. which, which then just led to Messi. Um, and then suddenly we were, they had all the possession and they were putting us back down in our territory and we were struggling to exit. I thought Ben Young's box kicking was was quite short. So even if we did get it back, we were still having to exit again. And um, yeah, and it just compounded everything. Why they didn't, they didn't really change anything. Why, why, my question would be, why was that? Why did not they bring on, not bring on Dan Robson to sort of try and lift the pace of the game? It brings the question in, well, what happens if maybe you need a different option at fly half or centre that's going to bring something different? Well, they've got that in George Ford. Have they? Well, Is he, he, Does he do anything different to Farrell? You tell me. Well, I've just gone there, hasn't he? <laughs> you tell me. Nuclear. Well, I don't think he does at the moment. I think he, did, he has done in the past, but at the moment I don't think he plays the way that he used to play at the line. Um, I think if he came on, he'd probably, because he's been in that role of of probably playing very similar. I'll bring up the question of would you get benefit more so with who, Sips or something like that? So would you would you have Cipriani on the bench? Well, I think, look, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, hindsight. I yeah. think if you knew that the game was going to go out there, you'd be far better having Sips on the bench than you would George, George Ford. Ford. But then if, you, if your game plan's working and you're, and you're having success, then obviously you can bring fresh legs on and continue it with George Ford. But... Yeah, you know, Ford in his pomp when he was playing flat at the line, he was he had runners all over the place. I think um, he's he was great, but I don't think he's he's not doing that like he used to be. Do then. you think England was surprised, caught caught by surprise? I don't think you can. I don't think you can say they were caught by surprise. They were comfortable at half time at at ten three, and so I don't think you can say they were caught. I just don't think they in that period where they lost a little bit of control, they didn't change anything, and then. Before they know it, they're then having to play catch at rugby, but it was too late by then because obviously mm. that Adams try was what seventy seven something seven like that, seven minutes. Yeah. Nailed, nailed the door. I mean, shot. I thought, I thought, <coughs> to be honest with you, like most like most people, that we were going to go there, we were going to perform like we had in the first two games, and we and we were going to go away with it. I think we, I think we said about fifteen points or something, or ten yeah. points, fifteen yeah. points. I think, you know, Wales are especially with Warren Gatlin and Sean Edwards. Um, like specialists at this kind of ambush. So, because I, I, I wanted to come onto you, yeah, onto this with you. Uh, how the hell do they do it? Um, I think uh, a lot of it is down to um, 
a psychology, the the, um, the you know the talk around the team. You know, yeah. Warren's very good at the, the kind of the war of words in the media, but also to the team. You know, he we constantly tell him they're fitter than everyone. You know, Sean Edwards brings such emotion. You know, I think uh, a lot of coaches. Um, you know, uh, obviously give all, you know give direction and have passion, but you know, he's incredibly passionate. So so he would be all week onto them. He would have looked at that. He's a he's a guy that constantly looks at um, himself for self improvement in terms of how can he be a better coach, how can he do things differently. He tries yeah. weird and wacky things, and they would have looked at England's kicking game and, and and you know tried to address that as you talked about with the two guys in the fifteen channel. Um, you know, he, they they would have done that, but they would have just hyped this up. And I think with the advantage of being at home, where the whole place is is you know you'd never get that environment at Twickenham genuinely no. crowd wise you just wouldn't you just wouldn't get it you just don't get that hostile it's environment because it's right in the center of Cardiff and yeah. because the, the, the stadium is, is is right above yeah. the pitch I, I just mean There's in no terms track of, around the outside. I mean I, 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 you know I love the the, the the fans that go to Twickenham but they're just it's not the same intensity okay, loudness you know what I mean in terms yeah. of the, that, that loudness and I think all those elements go in there and I think Tins is exactly right that we went in half time I thought that we um, massive we, moment before half time. When England didn't score, yeah, yeah, and I, and I think that we, you know, we were in control, and I felt, listen, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to come out the second half, and we're going to crack on. We started the second half well, but then it's the penalties, and, and international rugby, and all rugby, really. It comes down to those positive and negatives. You know, if you were to look at a graph of that game uh, finishing, you know, in the first half we probably would have been constantly going up, and the second half we went down, and Wales just picked it up. Yeah. And the problem with uh, playing a team like Wales is that unless you get uh, that. You know those points on the board, and you keep it ticking over. They'll never give up. You then add the element of the sixteenth man, which is essentially the crowd in there. You know, you get a few bits. You start compounding errors. Then you're always going to be in trouble. And yeah. then, and, and then, like you know, like when we were down there, was it last year or the year before when yeah. they kicked? They couldn't exit. They kicked it, and Elliot Daly scored in the corner. It was always going to be, you know, quite tight unless you kept that scoreboard going over. And we just didn't do that. And and I think the the penalties were the real. With a real problem because you've just got to make sure that you play and and I think you know I looked at some of them actually I thought I'm really interested actually I know we talk about the rules of the game or the laws of the, the game laws, the laws yeah. the laws the laws um you know with laws, Sinks, Sinks is one right that that he he, he where he stood his ground yeah he catch tackle no no, no that, that one I mean, I like, or the high one on yeah, Alan Jones well, but he started off low hit him yeah. and Alan Jones is trying to go to ground, to ground and then he's just holding him up and, he, yeah. and his head sinks into his arm yeah. Yeah. and then it, and, and then he's obviously gesticulating yeah. I, I was like watching the game and I was like I don't understand that yeah. how, like. I'm high to hold you up. You're trying to pull down. If your head goes into my arm, yeah. I'm not going to let go of you. Then it's like, it's a high tackle. I'm like, but it's not. I didn't, didn't start that. Yeah. It wasn't the point if, you, of if you're it. self choking yeah. yourself, I've just done a good job on it. So where, where's the rule? Where's the law on that? I don't get that part. There, was, I think that's there rubbish. was one of those in the Island match as well. And yes. someone ducked right underneath it. And as he's going down, he sort of ended up on his neck, except that when he slow mowed that down, it looked like he was, <laughs> finishing him off with a choke grip but, <laughs> uh, but again yeah it's it's that thing where hang on I've got to try and tackle him if I can't get down there what am I supposed to do yeah. sort of I don't no. I don't get that and I, and I didn't like you know but I think post game a lot of the questions were like about you know for example about sinks and composure I don't I don't you know I think that unfortunately there was those two those, those two kind of back he to played back well errors, in that first yeah. half so don't oh, yeah, I, like, don't, I mean yeah. phenomenal yeah, that's what I mean, two tackles I think I think in some he's ways, he's taken a lot of. He's taken ways, a lot of crap. Yeah, but I don't yeah, think he should do. I don't think yeah, he should do. And I agree. And I think in some ways, Eddie made it more of a deal by subbing him after, straight after that. The one penalty it was pretty it, straight after, wasn't yeah. it? And then it, it sort of highlights it a little bit, and it got the. You could feel it got the crowd into it in the fact that another penalty, and then he's and he's off. I mean, yeah. The weird thing is, I've seen I've seen Sinks lose it, but not. Like I wouldn't say he no, lost. I don't think no, he lost it. I don't lost it. I just think he, he played on the edge. I think the kick chase thing was. You know, I think as a player now, you have to completely change your, um, you know, the way you approach these things because you know slow motion. These moments are killer. You know, some tackles yeah. that would have gone before that that choke tackle, for example, would have been yeah. absolutely fine. So you have to play to the current laws. You have to play to the current situation. So I think there was probably a little bit of naivety <laughs> around that that charge down one. The other one I think was really unlucky. But I don't think you lo I lost it. I think people no. just jump on those bandwagon yeah. and they don't they don't well, look at the whole game because, because it, only because it's been talked yeah it's been talked about during the week. That's the yeah. reason. But I don't I'm not, I I you know but then I just think see like I like it that a bit of bit of stuff because you because for example Alan Jones he he Alan Jones sorry he um I call him Alan from Wales actually Alan from <laughs> Wales yeah. he um. Now he's a master at you know constantly chipping yeah. in the referee's ear talking but that's what makes him such a. 
a, a, a good captain, kind of a, a formidable force like that. It's it's you, you, there's a game within the game, and I just did you see the picture of him at full time, the celebration? No, of Big Al. It did just a, a amazing passion, and you could see what it meant to him. And then there was a very good shot at the end where the Wales team all huddled around and he was speaking as the talisman, and, and the meme was going around. Find someone who looks at you the way the Wales team look at Big Al. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was he like on the Lions tour? Because he, a lot of people saying afterwards, he is, he is now moving into the list of the greatest Welsh players, full stop. Yeah. I mean, how He's many caps sort of you got around? now? 110, 15, 20? It's amazing that. Um, 123? No, I think he, uh, I actually, I, you know, we, I, we spoke on, um, on text, I messaged, I messaged him, um, you know, the other day, just saying, oh, "Congratulations, great yeah. game." You know, I just, I think for me, you know, we we, we actually played against each other in the um, age group stuff as well. Oh, did you? Yeah. So he did remind me that I'm older than him. He claimed he was 28. So you, as you were well, using a better moisturizer. <laughs> man, and the lid. He knows the lid's got to go. Yeah. Like that's probably, I'd say that's what up there with one of the worst lids in world rugby. But a fair play to him. If Persistent. you keep playing that well, you just keep on to it. He can I, mean, do what I think he's got well the height like. thing, so no one can really look on top of it. Yeah. Um, but I think. Uh, you know, he was. I think on the Lions tour, he he just, you know, he just he just goes hard in everything he does, and I think he he's a you know a good team man. Um, and you know, because when I when for the first part of it, he kind of wasn't involved in the Test match stuff, so he yeah. played against um, the Highlanders where we where we we were up and then we lost that. Yeah. And and obviously, I think he was he was really disappointed after that game, and then obviously he came back in and ended up. He started in the last, uh, was it last yeah. two tests? Yeah, I think, I think, I think. Um, and, and so he got back in there. So, he, you know, it was it was different for him because he'd always been first choice. And I think he was down the list. So he, I, I got to spend a bit more time with him in kind of the midweek thing. And he was, an, you know, inspirational guy, really. Yeah. When we did the Six Nations launch, I asked him if he'd come on mm. and he sort of ummed an and said he'd possibly. He doesn't give anything to the media, which is why he would be fascinated to have a proper chat with. I think he shut he shut, immediately he shut it down when he'll be interview. Yeah, and then it'll be an open book. Yeah, be an open book. <laughs> we should try and break it up. <laughs> but yeah, I mean you look at look at <clears throat> as well there's Dan Bigger also came in and made a massive effect on the game, but it was perfect for him. Yeah. Um I thought he should have started. I thought it was always going to be a game where he'd probably be especially if England came out with a kicking game. Yeah. Um, that he should have started, but then he came on and you know it was the perfect game for him. In was, terms he, of, was he back in at Saints this week? No, we, we, no, we said <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that um, you know when Biggs came into into Saints, he obviously started at the same time as as me. Yeah, I'm, I, I I haven't ever seen a fitter guy really than than him in terms of his fitness and his endurance. And I don't know what I expected because uh, I, I met him on the line saw, and I think if you ask him, he's one of the guys I think he thought. He would hate me, uh, and he only mildly hated me. No, um, I, th I think he thought we wouldn't Safe get time. on, and we actually get got on, got on really well, yeah. you know. Um, and I think I didn't know that I, I was surprised by by him, but actually, incredible team guy. Yeah, uh, you know, turns up for and I couldn't understand it. He's you know he's, he's always out with the academy lads with everyone. He's, he's not big time at all. Yeah, um, and he makes fitness. He's just insane. He just keeps running and running and running and running. And like, you know, he's a real professional, but not so blinkered that he doesn't have a, any chat or life. And there's a lot of people out there that are just solely focused, which rugby, is great rugby, works rugby. for them. But you need that personality. You need your 10, especially yeah. to have a bit of something about him. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought when he came on, you know, that extra fitness, that, that kind of speed he brought to the game, the fact that, you know, He's so good under the high ball. Yeah. You could almost see when he ran on, there was a smile, yeah. which sort of said, I, we've got this. Yeah, yeah, you could kind of see well, that. I, know. I think by that point it, the swing had started, and yeah. he was the perfect guy to then come and finish it off. And Take us inside. Have you spoken to any of the England team or messaged any of the England team off the back end? Uh, no, chins up. No, I, I, well, that's what's bad actually. Because someone said uh, once told me that when you win, you know, you get you get yeah. obviously a million text messages, and when you lose, you get one Quite. from your mum yeah. and your wife maybe, yeah. and that's and that's um, and that's it. And I always feel like I want to. To message people and say things, but also, but then you also put yourself in their shoes and you go, well, actually, I wouldn't want any. No, <laughs> I've also, but you know, I, mean, I, I, I've I don't been want there. any after we've won. Either, to be I've bad. been there and I've sat in that. I've sat in that changing room and like, you know, and what you, is that like? And what will it have been like on Saturday night with uh, horrific. particularly having gone for that massive high of Ireland horrific, horrific? Uh, you know, so my experience, you know, you, you would have been there, you would have played the game, you would have been exhausted because that was a physical, yeah. physical yeah. game. You know, I was watching that. They were banging at, each other. They were literally banging each other. You know. 
full tilt from minute one. And I think that's why, because most of the time you had 14 men on your feet. And while they did compete at the breakdown, I thought Tom Curry was great. And his dad listens. Hello, Mr. Curry. Does he really? Yeah, he does Welcome listen. Along. Um, I thought he was he was outstanding over the ball. I thought Mark Wilson was good again. Um, I thought Navidi was good over the ball. Um, you know, I thought they, you know... Uh, it was just so attritional that once you finish that, that exhaustion, but then you're in such a hostile environment yeah. and you're a million miles from anyone, you know you've got to go into the changing room, you've got to sit down, you've got to look at everyone else who's as equally disappointed as you. There's people in the room that will be feeling, you know, terrible yeah. because, you know, in their mind, they'll focus on the individual error. Yeah. So so somebody, you know, for, for example, Sinks, as we've agreed, I don't think it was anything to do with him, but he probably feel, feel, feel bad about that. You know, you've got Elliot Daly with the guys jumped over his head, which is impossible. Mm. You, know, I, I, you know, they call me Rizzler because you could just about fit a Rizzler under my feet when I jump up. Yeah. What is your leap height? You know, when you do it onto the standing so, box? Two millimetres. <laughs> <laughs> you so, 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 you, you know, you, so there's those people feeling that. So you're looking around. You want someone to come and make it all better. That's why, you know, I've been in environments with England, not under, not under Eddie, where we've needed somebody to come in and say something. Yeah. And nobody's done it. And they haven't come in, and they and and the coaches have walked around like that, you know, face like smacked ass, is really pissed off, not talking to all the players. And you need that. And I know, from experience, Eddie would have come in and been like very matter of fact, very frank. The other coaching staff, I haven't, I haven't, not overly familiar with, but I know the backroom staff, they would have tried to pick things up and go, actually, listen, let's address this, let's deal with it. But you feel very far from home. You want to stay away from your phone because, you know, international rugby invites all the potholes and pond scum that don't watch any other sport that come out who just literally hammer you. So yeah. you've got to stay away from your phone. You've got to go to these post-match functions where, you know, when I was younger as a player, you would want to look disappointed. You didn't want to talk to anyone. You were like, get out of it. As I was older and I lost these games, you actually wanted to go and celebrate with someone. You wanted to speak to someone. You wanted to put an arm around someone. You wanted to like actually yeah. revel in it because, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's terrible that you've lost, but you still want to celebrate what yeah. other people have achieved. It's what the game is. Yeah. You Don't get slightly depressed by the droning speeches as somebody, you know, as someone's... Alec, like, Alec Adu. Mm, some together. president steaming, yeah. rattling on. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and, then, and then you go back to the hotel. But sometimes if you go to these functions, I remember we've gone in and had to walk through crowds of people and getting absolutely abused. Um, and you get back to the hotel, you go back, you sit down, have a beer with the lads, have some food, try to reconnect. And you go back to your room and you're just sitting there going... Fuck that! That was a fuck up, mm. you know. Because and will England have felt on Saturday night that they cocked it up? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I don't. I know as Welsh people watch this. Yeah, not I'm, taking anything away from the Welsh. No, nah. they did. They, 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 they had a good game plan. They, they you know, they're physical. They're, they're, I think they're a very good side. They obviously, as Warren Gatlin said, they've forgotten how to, to to lose. Credit to them. I do genuinely believe that England uh, let themselves down by, uh, or sorry, let the game slip away, not themselves down. Let the game slip away, even though that was Eddie Jones's quote. Um, because I think if they'd, they'd adjusted those bits and pieces, had that little bit more discipline, the game was there for us to, to progress. And does that hurt more when you've let yourself down as opposed to when you hand, hold your hands up and say, you know, we, we were beaten by a much better team Yeah, today? I, I think so. If, if, uh, I think the, best, the way you can only address defeat in a, positive, in a really genuine positive way is if you've gone hell for leather with a team and actually the better team has, you has come off better. And, you've, but you've, and I've, I've played in a couple of games where you've given everything and it's come down to small margins and, and, and the team that actually probably deserved to win it won it and you've got to be. But coming off that, I think, look, going back to, uh, take nothing away from Wales because I thought they defended outstandingly well as well and what Hass said about them just smashing the crap out of each other mm. it was pretty much like that and that's where I'd have gone. We didn't then, we only once got the ball to Manu with an outside break. So they had a lot of ball but they... I just felt that weren't going very far. At, at, at half time, I was like, "We can give them the ball because they're not going anywhere." Yeah. But the only downside to that is then if you give penalties away, and then the ball is then in your twenty-two rather than where they were. But I just felt England could have done a bit more, and maybe given the ball. Johnny very rarely touched the ball. Yeah. Um, you know, the wingers didn't really see it. Um, so it was. I just felt they they will have felt that they've left a lot, a lot in the locker rather than putting it on the field. It hasn't been the Six Nations we thought it was going to be, has it? It could end up being the close Six Nations yeah. we had predicted, but yeah, it's not been. We teams. thought we had five genuine yeah. contenders. I think it's interesting with with Wales as well, though, because what we, you know, when I said at opening kind of comments about the psychological thing is that actually uh, winning that gritty game, coming back, well, you know, they were feeling great, and they would have. I guarantee, if I know Sean Edwards and Warren Gatlin like I do, mm. 
they would have parted the house down, and I reckon they they, they would have put as take much, it with the weekend's break. They exactly. would have put as much intensity into the piss up post match yeah. than they did to <laughs> um, to play in the game. And I think uh, you know I think that'd be really good for them. And I and I think that they're, they're a team that will have grown in confidence. Like you said, they haven't played played perhaps as well as they would want to. But actually, it's amazing what beating uh, yeah. England. Yep. You know, at home with that hype, grinding that win out, slowly taking things over, and to finish with an extra score yep. to really push things apart. Yep. You know, with the very fact that you know Gats been pumping their tires up and everything else, and they know that they can play better, or they believe they can play a lot better. Um, you know, I think that they, you know they could be on course for that. Really, coaches that you've played under, mm. does Gatland lead the best post-match victory piss up? <laughs> Um, he's definitely one that encourages it more than than, than anyone else. I, you know, I never forget my. You know, his his one thing at at, um, at Was was always. Uh, you know, if you train hard, yeah. you know, you play hard off the field. But if I, um, you know, give you any rope. Don't you get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. You have to turn up and front up, and that's what he loved. He loved you get on a smash and then turning up and doing a turning up and doing a session and, and not fronting up, not giving up. Like Tim Payne was like the master of that. Like Payne was the ultimate. <laughs> So I think they, they I don't think it's pain the toll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so a, lot don't of, a lot of good guys talents. packed down against them like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, like Painter, they said he's got extra red blood cells or a higher hemoglobin level or whatever. <laughs> so he could essentially just get on the steam and then turn up and kill everybody on the fitness test. He was unbelievably fit, Tim Payne. Incredible swimmer, yeah. like really, really fit. So he really? would get he would I literally get a phone call from him, and uh, I'd be like, I was, I was like eighteen, nineteen, or whatever, on the bus. He'd be like, "Hask, are you coming out on the? Are you coming out on the on a piss all day?" Bear in mind, we had like a night of the game, yeah. and so we had a couple of days off. Was I going to do it all day the next day? And I'd be like, um, "No, Tim, I've got a, a Sunday roast. <laughs> Fuck off, Hask." And, put the phone down, and I'd be like, "Tim, Tim," <laughs> and then and he would go around. If he would then join it, but then he would front up on the Monday or the Tuesday. And smoke everyone, be the most professional, kill it in the in the in the in the game. And I was just like that, in awe of the man. Um, Led by Gatland. Yeah, yeah. Who, who same, absolutely same, same question. Well, no, I think because Mitch, John, I've heard yes. legendary things about Mitch. Yeah, um, you know, he was good when he was with England in terms of. But I only experienced that for a, sort of a year, that '99 year. Yeah. Uh, or oh, before that, it might be '98. No, I didn't. Go it was '99. '99. Yeah. Um, and but then I heard great things about him at Sale, where like they'd call the boys in literally after a loss on a Saturday, and he'd lock them in. Like, they walk in the changing rooms thinking they were going to do two hundreds or something, yeah. And the room would just be full of piss, yeah. And he and he'd go and he'd just close the door and bolt it, and, like literally padlock it and say, right, we don't leave until all this is drunk. <laughs> what boy? <laughs> and then on the Monday he'd flog. You got to back it he'd up. Flog your guts out, and you, you know he's he's trying to find out what people's personalities are like, isn't it? I do want to explore the. I know you got. It's interesting. You've both said that Carl Sinclair didn't lose his head, and he has in the past said, "I play on the edge, and that's it." But a lot of people, a lot of. Well, I, I, st I still particular. believe that is where he was playing, and I don't think in any way did I, I think his head had gone that he was just chasing after people to try and. What what are the cheap things you're gonna put if you're a journalist you're gonna put out this, uh, this game if you don't like I, I I remember watching in the uh, the Lions store I watched all the journos uh, half of them weren't watching the game they were like glued to their laptops because they got to get yeah. they got to get stuff out by half time so if I was going to ask you what would be the thing well the cheap thing is uh, Wales are fitter than England that's a cheap thing that's a metric that doesn't how do you yeah. you, you measure that well because they won in the last yeah. few yeah. minutes that's bullshit so that's well, something look they're going to put out look at the way they actually scored the tries it was just from penalties it wasn't yeah. because they were fitter but that's what everyone taking. will say they're fitter mm -hmm. Carl Sinclair lost his head um, you know what because he gave away a penalty yeah that'll, that'll, that'll be you know that'll be that'll be the, the, the cheap the cheap <clears> thing because it's easy column inches there's no you don't have to be accountable for it you can just say it and, and move on and then you get someone chiming in you know what I mean like I, I know it was a, it's, it's a valid point but then everyone goes oh well you know, who do we need to put in you know our favourite friend I won't mention his name get Sippy back in you know no, but it's just yeah. look did it, is it panic stations absolutely not will they learn a lot from that game 100% is it very disappointing yes do, do I think after the first two performances we were well you know, well on our way to a grand slam yeah has that is that a wake up call showing that how close professional rugby is and it doesn't matter what pedigree you've got going into a game it's about uh, what happens on, what the, happens on the game and, and how you deliver you know, deliver it so, I think mean, someone said you know, about Owen being emotional it's like no, look they're all doing. They're all doing their best. All trying their best. Um, you know, they were beaten by a, a, a Welsh side that that kept the discipline, that ground the win out, that kept the scoreboard ticking over, um, and that's 
And that's what well, it is, you know? That's a very reasoned opinion from Thank you. you. I do try. I that do try. Really do. What I was actually going to ask is, can you think of some ex- some examples where players have... Because we, we had our friend on from... Yeah. I can't remember yeah. who played for when you were playing for Minch, and that's the only time you ever really lost your head. We were talking last week with Joe Marler about you losing your head um, when you two went toe-to-toe. I'm just thinking, can you think of any examples where players have absolutely yeah, gone Shabal. rogue? Shabal spat on uh, <laughs> Fraser Waters. Fraser would have hated that. Uh, it's uh, sir. Fraser. 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 Pulled out a leather glove. And, oh, <laughs> God, what are you doing, sir? He's like, chats, fucking hell, <laughs> French has gobbed on me. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite player of all time. <laughs> yeah. Chabelle? No, no Fraser. Fraser. Mate, just because of where he sits in the he social circle. Yeah, yeah, but he, he you know, you know Fraser, what a player he mate, was. As Fraser Waters, as like a posh you know, like wealthy kid from Harrow, mate. He used so to tough. fucking cut people yeah. in half. I know yeah. when I know when um, Lawrence left Was, and it's not a dig on Lawrence, but uh, lots of journalists like, oh, Was aren't the same without Lawrence. But hell of a player, mate. What like he was unbelievable. It's it's smashing. Go, okay, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Cheers, boy. Cheers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, boy. Cheers, boy. So Cheers, boy. lost his cool on Fraser. Why? Uh, I don't know. He just gobbed on him. I don't know. Um, <laughs> do you know, you know shit about. I got. I used to get. I, I got. I used to get eye gouged all the time. And I remember like I just, playing a game. and about just eye gouge me. Didn't uh, do you in that? Yeah, he did. Yeah, but that. Yeah. Yeah. A long time ago, when boys long, were boys. Yeah, boy, but that's, yeah. Why, that's what war criminals say. <laughs> it was yes, a long exactly. time ago. I was just yeah. following orders. No, um, love and war. no, but Shabal got me in the eyes, and I remember just grabbing his hand and like going, "What are you doing?" I didn't say it quite like that. And he just like completely dead behind the eyes, just get off and ran off. I was like, <laughs> "Do you know what I was going to say about the England game?" One thing that was interesting is, uh, you know, when people have a rough and tumble now, I can't yeah. abide this bullshit that rugby players are doing. Because no one ever throws a punch well, anymore. Like, like you and Joe Marlowe. Yeah. No, no, I, I actually got him in a Vulcan death grip. That's doing something. <laughs> I threw, I threw him really. on the floor. Sorry. Which I threw him lead, on the floor well, and got on top of him and got uh, full. If I wanted to, could have finished if him. If I so wanted to, that's yeah. 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 Everybody yeah. wants to be yeah, yeah, something. But now everyone just gets around and pushes each other in a huddle, right? I know you're not going to hit me. You know you're not going to hit me. Would you like to bring in the rule where, you know, like in ice hockey, where you can take off a glove and two of you can go toe to toe for 20 seconds? Bring in the goon. Yeah, exactly. Danny Bruce Cup runs in. Oh, yeah, but that's what I was. That's my point. Well, firstly, some of those uh, 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 we talked about it, Gareth Delve and uh, oh, yeah, Trevor Anus from London yeah. Irish. You've seen some of those fights on on online with people running him, and Trevor Anus has just stepped, boom, boom, banging people out. Yeah. So yeah, with that stuff happens. But that goes on to my point is that everyone has a rough and tumble, and I'm obviously not that threatening. People aren't that threatening. But when Manu, uh, they get someone gave a shit to Manu, you can see him grabbing him, but they're all a bit like. He, he could yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and, like, and they all remember <laughs> well, that Ashy, almost Ashy, took Ashy's Ashy. head <laughs> off his shoulders. And that they look at him, him and you know that if you watch that back in slow motion, like fair play to Chris Ashton. He's staying on this because my uh, yeah. fucking head would have it would have imploded. <laughs> and Your jaw all Ashy did was like go on top. Yeah, what are you doing to me? <laughs> but the thing. best thing is they all came to Manu and just went, yeah, fuck her. Yeah. Yeah, and Manu just <laughs> ran off laughing and I, I just, I could see so everybody's body language. Liam Williams. Yeah. yeah. And then what, did you see but what Liam happened? Liam Williams is apparently very, very tasty. Yeah. Is he? The scaffolder? Yeah. Yeah, the I've, I've heard a good yet. story about like literally having a full-on fight with his teammate in the changing rooms and literally <laughs> kicking the crap yeah, out of really? Yeah, 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 proper, proper but, scrapper. But yeah. Sanjay, that's his nickname, he, 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 um, when I first played against Wales, I didn't. I'd never heard of him. Didn't know anybody. He'd been playing like Division Two or something like a year before or yeah. whatever. I remember going into a tackle. He got up, trod on my leg, kicked me in the head, <laughs> and I was like, "Who the fuck is this <laughs> yeah. guy?" Next thing, like late shot, Judas, little little yeah. elbow in the head. And I was going, I can't, and I couldn't, was fascinated by his legs. <laughs> you so, can't look above his yeah. legs. So you never look at his number because there's these little bow things. Yeah. Yeah. He's not, mate. So anyway, that game carried on. And obviously, then watch his career like you know skyrocket. And I, then I think I got an opportunity, and I said to him, "Mate, what were you doing in those early games?" He's like, "Yeah, sorry, but I remember I'd been playing like Division Two, like gnarly men's rugby. I was a scaffolder. Like that's what Where's I thought that? it was like." But he was real. He was real niggly. Um, he's fine now. Oh, I assume he's fine yeah. now. But but you, yeah, I think he is a bit tasty, Robbie, especially with a roundhouse kick. He just hook you with one of those. Robbie, Robbie Fleck was the ultimate red mist. Yes, never seen anything like it. Uh, I did. That, we, we got to the, the point same, where was we that when play, you played we, with him at Bath. Well, yeah. So we played against uh, Safka where we stuffed them like 57. And yeah. some of the stuff he said to me was. That was that was the game where they lost. Like literally, I like standing over me screaming, "I hate you!" And I'm like, "Mate, we've just scored again." And he's like, and li- it was un- <laughs> trying to late shot me everything. <laughs> And I, so I literally found out that they were what trying to... Sorry, I'm just about that. I'm not going to try to talk about it. I hate you. 
I no. hate you. But it was like, oh, I, right. hate, I hate you. F- like, it was, then went on to family, was it, everything. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. And so I, and it really sort of, I was like, never seen anything like this before in, the, in my life. The things he was just screaming at me, literally for no reason. Um, and then, so I went back and I found out Bath were going to sign him. And I said, right, if you sign him, I'm going to leave. I just, I just can't get over the like, things that you said he wanted to do to my family and this and that. I said, well, I don't want to play with him. And then he came and he's generally the biggest legend that I've ever played with and just a great guy on really? and off the field. Did you but ever discuss it with put, him? Yeah, yeah. I, and he was like, oh, mate, we, I was just in a dark place. We were losing by 50 points. I, and I was like, yeah, but you don't ever do that. First game with him, he gets hit late. He's completely gone. I literally really? can't even speak to him. He's just staring. Like, who are we playing against? He was just staring at the guy. And the guy's run down the blind side. He's all the way over on the right of me and just starts sprinting across the field, thinking this kid's going to get the ball. And then he gets hit again. And then he starts running out in front of the line, just trying to hit this guy. <laughs> and I, it was my job for about five, well, two seasons before he, he sort of got injured. Just scream, Flecky, back in position. And, he, and he'd snap back out and he'd go, oh yeah, sorry mate, sorry mate, come back, stand in line. And then he'd get hit again and he'd just start beelining for someone else to try and whack them. Oh, and it was it was just, every Jesus. game was just like managing a, someone had no control they, over his emotion. Danny Krukot was, he, he, he was like, um, and oh. Rafa Leibniz, they were like two people who didn't lose their, their heads necessarily. Yeah, but every horrible. breakdown you would come out of, someone from the opposition would lie on the floor. Like Rafa Leibniz would go to clear a breakdown, he'd go through the other side, carry on, and there'd be a player on the floor and you wouldn't have seen it until yeah. you slowed it back down and it would have been a headbutt. He would have just headbutted the bloke in the face, <laughs> trod on him. Like Danny Krukot, I'd, you know, I'd heard he was the, um, you know, when you're younger, you hear about, oh my God, Danny Krukot, right? Yeah. He's six foot five. He's like Da Vinci's man. He's the same length between <laughs> a wrist to, to elbow to elbow to arm. He chews his food 25 times. He's a black belt in karate. Bionic. Right, yeah. so I was like playing this guy going, oh my God. First breakdown, I was over the ball. He, he, he ran in, cleared me out. Clear me out by my testicles. <laughs> right. <laughs> on my head, tip me on the head. And, and, I, and I was honestly like, oh my God. After the game, I was like- Did oh. he give them back? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah just about. Yeah, yeah. and um, now my miss- my wife keeps me in a handbag, and um, <laughs> they're all the car keys. <laughs> and, uh, and I honestly said to him, uh, I was like, "Fucking hell, you're losing." He just he was like, yeah. oh, so he was like, "Sorry, mate, I, I didn't know. I didn't remember it. Didn't, didn't remember it." It's completely like Danny, like Danny off the field. He's he could be again another player could be a serial killer. Bakes bread. Tens his, gar- really? tens his garden. Yeah. Tens his garden. Or he, he fertilises it with dead bodies. But, yeah. <laughs> but literally, you get him on the on the pitch. Always relaying the patio, isn't he? Yeah, Tom Palmer. That's why Tom Palmer had to go to yeah. the yeah. stand. He ran out of space underneath his patio. Yeah. Really? The Night Stalker. He'll hate me for saying it. I don't doubt he'll listen to this. But yeah, because you know, Tom Palmer was a lovely guy, but he, looked, yeah. he had the demeanour yeah. and look of a serial yeah. killer. Yeah. So everyone used to say... <laughs> Absolute night stalker. So that's why I said because he he went to stand at the same time as me, and he, he had to move out of his flat in, in, in Chiswick because he ran out of space under the patio. They <laughs> reckon they reckon arms were poking through. They reckon it wasn't level. <laughs> <laughs> the smell was beginning to get to the neighbours. That's what they were saying. Just gonna, just gonna check that section with the lawyers before it goes yeah. out. Yeah, I mean Tom Palmer yeah. definitely doesn't kill people. Uh, 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 just as Stephen Avery <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Drop, bind, set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Still to come, the boys are going to take on this week's perfect poor challenge. Have you, have you nearly done it? I'm, ne- I'm nearly He's there. He's been on his phone non-stop, isn't he? I don't know. I know, He's sorry. He's to do both at the same time. Well, 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 First, no, though, great. It's just, oh. here's a little something from Joe that you might like. <laughs> Cheers, Alex. Uh, I'm Chris Lloyd. This is Carl Frampton eating his way slowly towards the middleweight division. Uh, we're going to be here every Thursday talking about the big issues in boxing, getting stuck in uh, with, spe- uh, with special guests, behind-the-scenes interviews, um, and, of course, snacks as well. Um, tune in every Thursday, podcast and on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much indeed once again, Chris. Don't forget to join the House of Rugby Facebook group as well. Have you joined that this week? I've reignited my Facebook after a sort of a ten, my Facebook account. Mm. Oh, God. After a ten year absence it, to join the group. That's the most and, uncool sentence I've ever heard from. Yeah, I've yeah, reinstated my uh, uh, book face. Uh, my, sp- my, not, my face my face, face Facebook. Yeah. Is yeah. that something? <laughs> this is quite interesting actually. You'll want to listen to this. You can now vote <laughs> via our Facebook Facebook group. Uh, as to what you would like to see on limited House of Rugby merch. Yeah. And we've been uh, sticking up some uh, some options. Your choices currently include 
who is the heavy breather, question mark, which was long and dominant for the early parts. But since you've been away, it's died down. Be interesting to see what kind of take up that gets this week. Fuck Bucko, which is my absolute favourite. <laughs> yeah. I want, like I, want, I want a t-shirt with fuck Bucko. Yeah. Absolute <laughs> noise. Yeah. A lot of people don't know what Nors is. Uh, Nors is uh, like that. What's the no, that fan who contacted you? Uh, yeah. Like well, I didn't contact no, him. What's his name? Gavin? What's yeah, his name? Yeah. I can't actually remember now. Whatever his name was, we talked at the phone. You are a sorry, prime sorry Nors. Oh, Hugh. Hugh, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, rather. Hugh Farns yeah. Squires. That's my. Yeah. It, one of your relatives. He's an absolute Nors. And Nors is someone that's nauseating. Uh, they're very similar to a pothole that should be avoided at all costs. <laughs> Nausing is irritating. Um, like if you're a rugby Nors, you live and breathe it. You would, for example, yeah. hypothetically, Watch a game, clip things up, and send them to Mike Tindall yeah. on the thing. That is a, a definition a, a, a of a rugby, rugby noise. You're the kind of person that would drink loads of red wine, pin one of us in the corner post match, tell us how you could have made it as a professional, but you didn't. Breathe horrible toxic ass breath on us. Nause us up. Tell us that a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend <laughs> went to my old school and that we should be best friends. That is a fucking nause. If you've done that, <laughs> you're a nause. It's quite like me, that. Well, you, you are, you are, are, you are, are yeah, yeah, rugby nause. You're a yeah. definite rugby nause. You're a definite rugby nause. Oh, basically, if you know everything and you you. You correct people. Yeah. You're also yeah. a nose. If you're Perfect. really keen, then you're an absolute nose. Folded like a deck chair. Yeah, a lot of people wanting folded like a yeah. deck chair. Or a pocket map. Well, yeah, it was travel pocket map. map today, wasn't it? Travel map. Yeah. Uh, I'm a serious operator, Cheap which suit. is my that, for me, favorite. That's, for me, I know it's, uh, <laughs> uh, again, massage. Oh, you, this is the, another thing. Some bloke came up to me the other day and went... Um, I never understand this. Just another piece of advice to anyone out there if you don't want to be nose and nose. If you've got something nice to say to someone, don't come up and go, you're a prick, but actually you did okay. Yeah. This bloke came up to me and went, well, your, your massive ego doesn't need massaging anymore, but I thought you were really good on this show the other day. Not this show, another show. And I was like, um, Virgin Radio with uh, uh, Chris Evans. And it's sort of really good. And All I went, right. okay. so what I'll do is I'll take that as a kick in the balls and also a compliment. How about we just forget the bit where you try to be funny <laughs> and be rude? Just be nice. The world could do with that. And I'm not going to come up to you and go, mate, your shoes are really shit, but your wife's fit. I'm not going to, it's, you know I mean? it's not going to happen. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I might want to do it. I go, yeah. mate, I really like your jacket, but your teeth look like a set of burnt fence posts. <laughs> sort them out. I can't, I can't, can't breathe in through the nose. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one right, slightly Captain black, black tooth. Tooth. <laughs> Are you going to get that fixed up at some yeah, point? Yeah, I fucking will do. Don't come yeah, at me about it. I'm offering yeah, yeah, you some advice. I, I always used to be able to say it. Every time we walk into a, a meeting... Back in the day, and Ashley would go, "Oh shit, teeth!" <laughs> and you go, "Fuck off, up nose!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, Look at the state of them teeth. Look at that, mate. Teth. Good teeth. He's got hot balls. Ashley's got the reddest testicles in the world. He's got hot <laughs> balls. Like yeah. some of the gibbons, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. He's, he's suffer, he suffers from a thing. He's got hot balls. I don't hot know why. Hot balls. Yeah, that's what he says. He's got. Come on, he's hot had balls a, he, he, he had terrible got, teeth yeah, as well. Balls in the Looked like they'd been thrown in from a distance, but he, he got all those Invisalign, whatever those products, wearing them flat out. And I've got one slightly black gum where I knock my teeth out, and I'm those black teeth. You know how <laughs> on this show, on the podcast, they sort of clip up the three headlines from the show? Yeah. We'll digest Wales, England. We'll digest yeah. our politicians, 15, and Chris Ashton's red hot balls. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah, going to yeah. be the. Uh, that's really a T-shirt. Yeah, I'd wear it. Chris um, Esther's red shirt. My, red up my uh, I'm having a print run of one of Never Microwave Moul Marinier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I, love that so I, love I was worried that Joe, because I thought you know, like some people don't understand things, their first reaction to get angry. Yeah, well, I thought he was going to get you because yeah. he just didn't understand. I thought he, he thought you were taking the piss hugely. Go to the Facebook page, vote for your favourite. We're going to do a limited run and. We need to run a competition where we can give them away. Yeah, th but these are, these are, because what we talked about doing is like, a, it's just a very small, you know, first come, first serve with, yeah. a, with a competition to give a couple yeah. away. If you know, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, they will never be repeated. I want to run a competition where if we can get someone to take a banner to a premiership game and get on telly with who's the heavy breather, hashtag HOR. Yeah. And we clip it up and we see it, we'll yeah. send them some merch. Yeah. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Take a banner with your favourite Facebook... God, we've come up with some crap actually looking through this list. Uh, whichever one is your favourite, <laughs> wave it at a premiership game of your choice. And if we get you on telly and we clip it up, we'll send it into us or send it to you on don't social media. Don't send it to me. I don't. On social media. No. Uh, we'll send you your T-shirt. Send it to Rugby Joe. Explain that? Does that make sense? Yeah, essentially go to a premiership game, create a banner like an absolute nose, get it in the thing <laughs> with who's heavy breather question mark H-O-R and we'll give you a t-shirt for being a nose. I'm not sure you did that any better than me. What? Do the thing and on a banner and <laughs> stick it <laughs> yeah, on the telly yeah. and we'll Listen. cool. Anyway, have a crack at it. Um, back to the Six Nations. Are you coming in off the long run about Ireland? Am I what? Coming off the long run ready to bowl well, you, an absolute you know, like Yorker. Sort of I can translate no, for him. They, I, I thought they still haven't they haven't it's been weird that 
uh, whether that England game has just knocked their complete confidence because on the match pint Guinness thing, I had them winning by 30. But, you know, Ireland? Yeah. In that England? Oh, well, this weekend? No, last weekend. Oh, we're not talking last weekend. Oh, yeah. we're talking this weekend now. Well, I'm talking about England. I'm forward. talking about Ireland, Italy. I was, uh, oh, yeah, Ireland, Italy. I yeah. had them winning by 30. But... I had 31. Oh, well, I um, didn't have anything because I'm not a complete noise. I was actually doing something else. I was actually um, on my digger this weekend. When are you playing? I went the next day. Well, you had to obviously right. smash some things. Cause you were... <laughs> no, no, no. I had, a, you know, I had a very casual day. Uh, I was. Um, what were you landscaping? Uh, a mate of mine's place. Actually, it was interesting. Tom Wood was doing woodwork in the background with Ben Franks, who looks like he looked like a, a labourer. <laughs> with lovely, was, they were doing that thing, and I was on my digger. And, and yeah, I, how's this mate employed the three of you, sir? Yeah. I don't know. He's he's delegating. He was on a barbecue actually. He just I just got delivered a little knock on the rugby, cab. A, he's an absolute rate. rugby nose, basically, isn't he? What yeah. a great <laughs> alpha male Sunday. With what, a chain you know and... Yeah. I just sat on my digger, house music in, had a burger, um, and I just just relaxing, digging out this massive bit of land. I mean, it would probably cost him about fifteen grand worth of groundwork. So I did for free. Cash. Um, yeah. So go, mate. Yeah, if I was would. saying from the England game. <laughs> That they've probably lost. They seem to have lost all their confidence from that England game, and they haven't really found it yet. Um, because that's normally an Italy team. They're just clinical, critical, uh, clinical in, in terms of just they would take them apart, and they just didn't do that. Um, and I'm not entirely sure they know what's going on at the moment in terms of why it's happening, but uh, they need to they need to sort of step it up if they want to go to Wales. But I, you know, they don't become a bad team overnight. I just think they maybe have had a, a sort of lack of speed confidence. Wobble. Yeah. Scotland, I oh, think just decimated. So much hope, so much expectation. Well, you can't have. Uh, unfortunately for Scotland, you can't go through, have that many injuries to so many key players and expect to, you know, play at the level that they've played at. I just, it's a shame, really. It's a shame for the Six Nations because I think a, a full, fully fit, full strength Scotland is a team that can beat anyone on the day. Is it yeah. a good time to, to not tell everyone that I'm Scottish qualified? <laughs> <laughs> if uh, I am actually, are you why? Yeah. I think it's my mum's dad, some Scottish or part Scottish. Yeah. You Hamish have to... Watson's a hell of a player, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I doubt I, I doubt I'd get a game. <laughs> I doubt, have to go I doubt play, get into the team. You but... have to go and play for Scotland in a Sevens Olympic qualifying tournament. That's that's the loophole. Poor me at Sevens now. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll just be known as the roundabout. People just go around me. Honestly, I'll be so slow that people would start sponsoring me. I'd have a flower display on my back. But like, Paddy Power, Paddy Power, Paddy Power, Paddy Power would be over you like a rash. I, I, I do that actually. I've got no soul. I would hundred percent. <laughs> you are available. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd let Paddy. You know, if Paddy Power wanted to tattoo something on me, I'd do it. <laughs> For the right amount. Would you change your name? Who was it? Who was the person? Yeah, Epitone. Epitone. What a boy. To Paddy yeah, Power at the World to, Cup. Yeah. But then he had to change it back. Then he yeah, but didn't he? Didn't he? He changed it to Paddy Power and then donated some of the money to help uh, Tonga get to. Yeah, I think he gave. I think I don't think he took the money. I think he went to the yeah players. To yeah, what a ledge. Uh, France. He's a hundred. Fr- he's one hundred and fifty kilos right now. Is he? <laughs> is he really? He would never I'm doing what? His nickname was Banger. Anyway, uh, he uh, would literally put, again hit people so hard. Yeah. Not, not scarily not hard. To change postcodes. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's ginormous. Vive la France. Uh, yeah, it's good to see them pick players in the right positions who probably should have started the whole tournament. It just takes the old fellas to put their mouth in it and, and they get dropped and then actually it looks like the young guys have actually got some He's, some he's a proper player, Dupont, isn't yeah. he? Proper player, and then I thought Entermat was fantastic as well. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it actually pulled everything Gomez. together a lot better. Um a nod as well to the Red Roses, who it looks uh, had a very good win in uh, in Wales, fifty-one twelve against the Welsh. 12, yeah. Please, someone's doing it over the border. Um, How many is Breach? Jess there? Breach, five internationals for England, sixteen tries. If only life was that easy. <sighs> that eh? was under twelves rugby back in the day, I mean, wasn't that it? Get, that is keep that stats, not for international rugby. Yeah, amazing. We're going to get Rachel Burford on one week as well. Yes, she wants to come and have a chat uh well done the red roses keep up the good work i don't think she likes me why well i think she's a massive fan of um joe marler but i don't i don't i don't i think we've only met once and i've got my, such a magnetic personality I obviously offended her within two seconds because she's very excited about joe marler but never said uh, <coughs> never said anything nice about me so i will put in a good word she's top top dollar are you ready for this week's Guinness? Have you finished? Oh, uh, a couple I'm just of holes in there. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready for this week's Guinness Perfect Pour? Our weekly test in 190 and a half seconds because that is how long it takes to pour the perfect pint. We have had some very solid 15s over the last few weeks. Could we just actually give a nod to Joe 
Marla and the effort he put in last oh. week. Oh, it was. I mean, he thought it through. He'd remapped it. He'd done Mate, substitutes. He had, he had, he'd done transfers. But, but he had specific films that they were in to represent the characters. He'd gone to a whole new level. Like, I he felt had embarrassed. Taken to a new level. Um, this week we've gone with politicians. Fifteen because Brexit rages around us. Um, I think it's fair to say that this is based on whether the politician fits the position, not necessarily any political leanings. Yeah. We are allowed dead or alive. I've um, basically taken liberties and mine aren't all from the UK. So. Uh, well, I, well, okay. I wasn't uh, going to do that. Like, gonna I be, wanted to it put was Trump to be. Yeah. <laughs> Have you put Trump in? No, I was going to. I wanted to. Okay. That man's unbelievable. I want a montage like him of just going, I probably know more about yeah. this. Than I probably yeah. know more about Nobody selecting teams. knows more about healthcare than me. I probably know more about walls than anybody else in the world. Like, but, but it's completely oblivious. I want to be able to have a back catalogue where I'm just categorically lying about everything and nobody was, says anything. I was remarkable. sat with... Uh, I was at a lunch yesterday with... Donald Rory Trump. Bre Rory Bredner, <laughs> and he does an unbelievable Trump. Really? And he knows about Donald Trump, too. Yes. Um, where should I go? Far away, Hask. Stand well okay. back, everybody. Okay, <laughs> number one, Boris Johnson. Strong opening. Uh, number two, Nicola Sturgeon. Because she looks a bit like Brian Moore, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she's been like you know, aggressive. You then. know, you said you were Scottish qualified. Yeah, yeah, no that's more. just well, ended. That's right. Um, Gordon Brown three yeah. when he was a bit dumpier. Um, uh, Chris Gray, uh, Chris Grayling at uh, number four. Good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Philip Hammond number five. I worry about his durability in the full eighty, but I think. Yeah, I mean, I worry about... Light in the line I worry about Gordon Brown. He can only see out of one eye. I'd be running around in circles the entire time. <laughs> um, Good. Uh, John Major at six. Cool. Sort of silent assassin yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nigel Farage, because he's a complete fucking lunatic at seven, just doing things, upsetting everyone, <laughs> causing havoc. Yep. Um, you know, doesn't, doesn't matter where you come from, he'll tackle you. Yes. Um, probably well. foreign people more than, 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 than yeah. anyone from the UK. Winston Churchill, number eight. Solid. Real Something. solid, you know. It, Not be, big for an eight. No. No, but he's got a bit of depth. Like I saw Sam Simmons He's got type. a bit of scrum, scrum depth on him. Yeah. And uh, he can singe people with his cigar. Yeah. Uh, John Burkow at nine. The speaker, he's a little yes. short guy. Um, very chopsy. Very chopsy. Very much like most scrum halves. Uh, Margaret Thatcher just pulling strings at ten. Margaret Thatcher mm. on a rainy day. Yeah, I want to... I mean, I know people get really upset about this. I didn't realise how... You know, like you just don't really pay attention how upsetting people do get about Margaret Thatcher, how everyone's celebrating her death. I don't, it's just, it's a game. Everyone relax. <laughs> Please don't message me about it because I won't reply. Um, number 11, Theresa May, because she's going to need some speed to get the fuck out of the problem she's <laughs> In, caused. Interesting you've put Theresa on the left. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think. Yeah. I, I like that, Norse. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 12, Crash Ball and Widdicombe. You're oh. not stopping that with a good bit of pace, are you? Let's be fair. <laughs> saw on dancing. On a little switchback. Yeah, she on dancing on ice. Just a short Margaret Thatcher to Anne Widdicombe. Yeah. Theresa May just speeding off. Um, yeah. Michael Portillo at 13. Very Tory heavy. We're noticing here at this point. <laughs> are, are they all? <laughs> not all, but See, we're, only you know, you I mean, Gordon Brown. This. I think is your only. Yeah, Gordon Brown. I oh, know Tony Blair at 14 because he's Blair. equally good at running away from shit. These yeah, calls. Good. Um, and at number 15, real steady, classic Tory man, William Hague, just under the highball. I like what we've done there. Yeah. Who are the controversial ones? Nicola, St Nicola Sturgeon. I think Nicola Sturgeon as, as Brian Moore is, is no, no, possibly uh, going to get some headlines. Um, and Nigel Farage at seven. Yeah. But otherwise, I think that's a fairly solid, gentle... Problem yeah. is, though, with Farage at seven, he would be very selective at who he tackled. That is one of the that issues. That is very true. That is very... He'd be good in the clubhouse afterwards, though, with the old... Oh, mate, steamy. He'd be, he'd be social secretary. Tins. Are you allowed to do this? Is this you know, a conflict of interest? <laughs> <laughs> Royal family can't really interfere. State matter's going to yeah. get hauled in yeah. here. Mine's off the cuff and mine's very much off what the rules were. John right. Prescott at one. Yeah. Nigel Lawson at two. Good. Oh, isn't John Prescott... Oh, no, it's wrong guy, sorry. I've got Churchill at three. I've got Churchill at three. Okay. Captain. Yeah. Obviously. Chris Gay Grayling at, uh, at four. Yeah. Uh, Michael Hesseltine at, uh, at five. They're both... Yeah, you know, one, yeah. one yeah. meter ninety-five and one meter ninety-one respectively. Yeah. We can do it. This is where I've gone this little bit off. I've got Klitschko at six. Wow, well, yeah, gone out so of the Europe. Not, not yes, exactly. <laughs> I've got out of the UK. Away oh, from from yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Import. Well, I've yeah. then, then just gone down people who could play sport. You're like got Bristol. Into it. You're like the Bristol of the fake so team. So then I've got, I've got John Major at seven again. Very yeah. grey. Go under the radar. No one will see yeah. him. Like Tony Neary back in the day. Yeah. No, I don't. Like we know yeah. that who Tony Neary is. No, I right, okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> at eight. Yeah, Governor of California, very good. Yeah, nice. Uh, I'm struggling at nine. I could take. I'll, I'll go Maggie Thatcher at nine. Okay. Um, because people are like 
giving nines a kick in, so clearly <laughs> I, got, I got Tony Blair at 10 because he won't tackle anything and run away from most things. Uh, <laughs> I got good. Sir Menzis Campbell. Yeah. Um, he was he a, was a, he, a, he, a he ran he 400 ran metres, he? he? had the British uh, uh, 100 metre record yeah. for a long time uh, yeah. at 11. So I think he's it's Mingy's quick. Campbell, but we can get Menzies. So oh, Mingy's Campbell? I don't know. Pronunciation, enunciation. Well, yeah. I bet in his one he's got uh, Benjamin Disraeli and Sir William Pitt in your in your team. Haven't you? Yeah, Real old references. Yeah. Don't spoil the I party. Bor- I got Boris at twelve. Big tugboat. Very good 12. crash ball. Yeah, yeah, it's solid. Um, I'm actually struggling on thirteen. Um, give me a thirteen. Uh, Trump. <laughs> I could get Trump on. Yeah, on my he's probably basis. the best thirteen that's ever been. He probably knows more about rugby than any of us do. Got, so. Well. It's to be confirmed. Uh, 14, I've got Manny Pacquiao, fast feet. Yeah. Duck, weave, dodge. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got Alice Douglas, Alec Douglas Home. He played first class cricket. So Did he really? He's good under the high ball. Yeah. Sorry, Alec Douglas Hume. Very good. You've done it. That's quite a lot of research, actually, for a... He spent the whole show doing it while we were talking about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Tins, would you like to... Um, you're on fire. Mm-hmm. Am I? That's great. That's great. <laughs> Very cool. I've done Prescott, two jags at, at loose head, like you. I've done Churchill at hooker okay. with Ken Clark on my tight Lovely. head. Very good in the clubhouse yeah. afterwards. Hesseltine at four. Paddy Ashdown, ex-Marine at five, yeah. tall. Nice. Alan Clark is my captain. He did mother and daughter. Very good tourist. Have you ever read the Alan Clark diaries? He did a mother and daughter team? Yeah. That's profesh. That's, yeah. really good. That's like, is there, a, is there an award for that? You know, you get like certain wings. Is that like just the, tri- yeah. like the double crown or something? I know, I did, I know a story about a man who I will, will not name, but he we were on tour somewhere and he came back and it wasn't my room he knocked on. He knocked on one of the lads' room and said, I brought you something back. And the lads said, no, it's all right. And then he, he did a mother-daughter and they come by an age, added up to 100. Oh, I'm, I tell you what, that's one of the things, one of the best wow. things for stories to interrupt you. I'd love like to know where the split lies in that. Yeah. You know, like that is. I apologise, Chloe. This is not. I'm not talking about myself, so don't freak out. It was. Um, we have a comment, you know, we're standing around. This is when you're in the darkened room, and then you yeah. can't see that sometimes the light yeah. on. Yeah. No, it's one of those things where you have a conversation. And the lads like, oh, so you know, what's the, where, who's the oldest bird you've been with? And I was like a few like when they were younger, I was like 38, 45. Someone sort of went 72, <laughs> and we were like, oh, <laughs> what do you mean 72? <laughs> and he went, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, I went back, to, and I was like, I, I just honestly, and the bloke was a terrible looking dude. Anyway. But I mean, imagine the set. Like, what? I mean, how would you even? What? How? Where? 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 Honestly, what? Honestly, we were like this. I was like, I can't. Um, just explain the logistics. I mean, what was it? How did you? Um... Does he get cheered for that or asked to leave the club? Like you... uh, no, because no, initially it was just like you know when he went, people go forty-five, something, something, and he just went seventy-two, and everyone just went. Sorry. <laughs> What well, the fuck? Well, you could uh, you could put it into nowadays. Who's seventy two? That Bridget Nielsen can't be far off. What she's sixty seven, about to have a kid. Yeah, she, Bridget Nielsen's about to have a kid at sixty seven. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah. Is it, really? Yeah. I thought it was like medically impossible. I, don't know. I think she had to help to make it happen. Well, what? It, it, someone someone <laughs> put it in their, someone else's body, <laughs> did they? Yeah. Yes. He had a, he had a kid. What you mean? Someone else grew it like a surrogate. Um. I'm from Bridget Nielsen to Sir Keir Starmer, who's my seven Who? shadow Brexit secretary. Uh, Boris Johnson, eight, absolute wrecking ball, taking out school kids, other yeah. politicians, everybody. Nick Clegg, forever deputy at nine, Maggie at ten, like you. Jeremy Corbyn on the left, Nigel Farage uh, on the right wing. You're such a nose. Oh. See, see, this goes back to the definition I've of nose. Yeah. That David is Miliband at 12. I was struggling for a 12 with Jacob Rees Mogg, a dandy at 13. Long stride, hard to get hold of. <sighs> Just Have you seen? Can, can you I get on board with someone who uses a oh, dandy? dandy yeah. I know. Tony I, Blair at oh, fifteen. You, you probably back in the day would describe me as a bounder and a cad, wouldn't you? Yeah. We've gone from record viewing listening figures yeah, last week. Do you think Brexit mm, is going to maybe. halve well, our well numbers? I as think as we'd as have had far more fun doing dictators, but you, okay. yeah. Yeah. Some, do you want to do? We're going to offend some people, by the way. Yeah. You, oh, I've offended some people. You two are pretty squeaky clean. I would have offended them. Do you want to do dictators? Yeah, hundred percent. And I want to do serial killers. Um, I think serial killers would be good. See, I thought like yeah. a dinosaur fifteen or cartoon character fifteen. And, and or, we could do that as well. I mean, he's got we're only a few 15. shows. Yeah, but I thought like you could have Ted Bundy, Ed Gein, Harold Chipman at ten. We said, uh, stop putting that face. Um, who else could you have had? Uh, could have Fred West in there. Fred West. Uh, Fred, <laughs> Fred and Rosie <laughs> West. Yeah. Um, the rich is going aboard. Oh, Myra Hindley at nine. Myra uh, Hindley at nine. Uh, so you got the Jack the Ripper at seven. Yeah. Control. I'm quite interested in Jack the Ripper actually. I'm really interested. 
is, I, I've read we five books on it. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah, I have. We I'm obsessed with it, yeah. yeah. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening to the House of Rugby and making us the UK's biggest sports show. We're a YouTube show and a podcast. Don't forget to download and watch our new boxing show, TKO with Carl Frampton and Boys Don't Cry with Russell Kane, which discussed pornography last week. I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah. We haven't done anything. No, no, we haven't done a lot of porn on this show. We've done Jackie no, no, Michelle she, and yeah. we've done a Ron Jeremy. Yeah, we're, we're House Michelle. of Rugby. I don't know how you seg and we segued into a lot of things. I don't know how we'd seg into hardcore porn. There's also a House of Rugby Facebook group where you're very welcome to leave your thoughts on most of the things that we discuss and get your nominations in for the t shirts. Good luck with your heavy breathers banners at the weekend at. Prem is it Premiership this weekend? Or is it? Yeah. yeah, Premiership Games this weekend. Thank you to James. Thank you to Mike. See you next week. Goodbye. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe. Together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.